Hi, it's Brian Forster of Hidden Inca Tours, and today we're exploring Lake Titicaca in Peru. This location is called Santiago de Oje, and you can see the size of these quite megalithic blocks. The stone is not from the area, and in fact, nobody knows the location of the quarry. You can see that uh, here is the snake all coiled up. Why the site is so badly damaged? Was it cataclysm? Um, zealot Christians? Who knows? But in order to get some proper insight of this area, let's see what Gustavo Morales has to say. Okay, here we are in Santiago de Oje. And uh, this is a very interesting place that we had a chance to visit now. We were just mining around this beautiful, what we think is a Tiwanaku pieces, and all of a sudden, a couple of the locals came by, and they were talking with one, one of our friends here, and they started giving us some very interesting stories about this specific place. According to them, there is the uh, gate to this tunnel, and the tunnel goes to different directions. Uh, according to them, it goes to the village right behind me, face south all the way towards Tiwanaku, and they go further. They think that it's another tunnel that connects all the way to Cusco. And they, they're saying that it's an ancient type of uh, tunnel, and they are very kind of superstitious. Uh, they don't want to give a little more information, but they were saying that at night, there's the snake that comes out from this tunnel every night, about eight meters length of snake. And then the other guy is saying about all eight other different snakes that they point all at the same direction. They all point in south. So it's it's uh, really impressive. It's very impressive. You have to understand that most of the local people here are very conservative. So for someone to just come for no reason and try to share, it's something that we should appreciate. It. They try to keep things very low profile. They have a lot of respect to Mother Earth or Pachamama. Everything that um, that will be disrespectful, they try to avoid it because at the end she's the one who decides if they have good production or not in agriculture. So it was very impressive, very interesting testimony of what they think it happens here every night, especially about the snake. They're talking about eight different snakes. They go to different corners, but they all face to the same direction, south, where exactly Tiwanaku is. So the, the snake sculpture is pointing to Tiwanaku, it's correct. looking at Tiwanaku. It's correct. And what does the snake represent in Inca tradition? Well, the snake represents the protector of the goods of Mother Earth, or Pachamama, part of the three layers. Above ground, Alcapacha, where the condor is, Acapacha, where the puma is, represents the human being, and Mancapacha, below ground, it's the snake. So the snake protects the goods of Mother Earth or Pachamama. So very few people visit this location. Uh, you can look it up on a, on a map. Again, it's called Santiago de Oje. It's well worth a visit if you happen to be anywhere near Lake Titicaca. Next, we're at the little town of Copacabana, which is actually in Bolivia, just over the border. And this is called the Orca del Inca, which means the gallows of the Inca, but of course that's a Spanish interpretation of an ancient megalithic site. No one knows, in fact, who created it, but it is definitely some kind of solar calendar, probably for either the equinoxes and the solstices, or maybe just the equinoxes, or just the solstices, but likely all four. No one knows who actually made it. It could be an Inca construction, or it may actually be something far older than that. And there are many different ancient sites in this area. There you see Lake Titicaca in the background. And there are definitely megalithic remains on the hill that you see in the background here. So as I said, in this area there are many megalithic sites that are not very frequently visited. Uh, it's information that you have to actually get from local people. So these strange cutout shapes in the bedrock are exactly the same as we see in the area of Cusco in Peru. Of course, some people are going to say that this is a quarry of some kind, but the shapes of the blocks 
don't make sense in terms of quarrying because they're all basically pie-shaped. Another theory is that they're some kind of throne, but they face in different directions. So they're not focused on one specific area. And uh, that's why, again, these places are so mysterious. So there are thousands of these cutout shapes here around Lake Titicaca and also in the area of Cusco in Peru. Their function unknown. The weathering shows that they are likely several thousand years old. And this gives you another view of some of these cutout shapes. Only the local people know about this site. And so it's very difficult to find places like this unless you do a lot of study beforehand. Now we're at Amarumuru or Aramumuru, which again is near Lake Titicaca. Some people believe that this is a portal or a stargate of some kind. Uh, the, the actual function, original unknown, original builders unknown. Notice the central uh, space. And here's someone who's, that's our bus driver, who just did some kind of um, worship or ceremony. And on the left and right sides of the central portal are these vertical grooves deep in the sandstone. Again, original function unknown. And then this place that took me five years to find is called Kenuani. And again, it's just located uh, or is located just over the Peruvian border from Bolivia. Some people think it was a stadium. It faces directly to the lake and in fact faces Tiwanaku in Bolivia. The stone is not super hard. It's a compressed volcanic ash. But who made this, when it was made, and why it was made is completely unknown to this very day. But you see, these are very evenly shaped stairs in the, uh, in the stone itself. There's no specific logical pattern to it. Very complex effort was involved in creating it. But who actually made it? Again, unknown. And that's the whole part of going on an adventure in the Lake Titicaca area, especially with us at hiddenincatours.com. And this is a small basalt uh, megalithic construction. Again, located very close to Lake Titicaca, near the city of Puno. And you can see quite massive blocks were employed. And also they were shaped and fitted very tightly without the use of mortar. Original builders unknown. It was likely utilized by the Inca culture, possibly other cultures as well. And it's called the Temple of Fertility. And the reasoning behind that, you will see, is pretty obvious as we go inside. So these are shaped like mushrooms or phalluses. I think far more likely that they're phallic shape. And uh, that's, of course, why it's called the Temple of Fertility. And now we've moved on to Lake Titicaca itself. These are the floating islands of the Uros people, a very ancient people who predate the Inca, predate the ancient Aymara. And this is our brilliant local guide, Stephanie, who is an absolute expert on the ancient cultures and sites of Lake Titicaca. We use her services whenever possible. So now we leave the Uros Islands. And actually, we're back in Bolivia, on the Bolivian side. And this is a scale model, I believe, of Ra 2. And the builders of the Ra ships were these people from the Lake Titicaca area. 
and every time we visit the lake, we always go visit them. And now, a very small but very elongated skull located in the local museum next to where the reed boats are. This child would have been less than two years old, and this is very likely a natural elongated skull, not the result of cranial deformation. So that's, of course, something that I'm studying uh, a lot in the area and also on the coast of Peru. And finally, upcoming tours at hiddenincatours.com.